welcome to another edition of Pens Down. Here we sit with journalists and get to understand the journeys through their crafts. Those things don't get reported with the news because the principle is that the journalist is an observer, not a participant in the news gathering, processing and reporting enterprise. Pens Down is here to turn the CCTV camera on the journalist and give you a rare inkling into the behind the scenes issues they grapple with while getting you the news. My guest today has over 14 years industry relevant experience as a multimedia journalist. He is the Northern Sector Bureau Chief of Media General, operators of TV3, Onya TV, Akoma FM, Onya FM, Connect FM, and 3news.com, their online portal. He joined TV3 in 2008 for his national service and has, for a greater part of his professional life, worked with the station and his sister brands. He also had a brief stint with GH1 television between 2017 and 2019, serving as assignment editor. In 2017, he covered the Liberian election, which brought soccer great George Oponwia to power as president. In 2019, he covered Ghana's bilateral talks with Russia in Moscow ahead of the famous Sochi conference, which brought together African heads of state to Russia. He has interviewed many high-profile political figures, including Ghana's Vice President, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, and former President John Dramani Mahama. He is married, and the union is blessed with three children. I have been joined today by William Evans Nkum on Pensdown. Welcome, my brother. Thank you very much, and right. I'm so happy to also have you again on my screen. Right, Jesse. right. I first of all I want to find out how did the decision to go into journalism come about in the first place? Well, Jesse, so it wasn't by design, let me say mm -hmm. by default, because um, right in my maybe growing up, journalism, even though I admired that particular that particular profession from afar, it wasn't part of um, my plan. Um, but some way, somehow, I found myself in and what will later become a passion, what will later mm. become part of my uh, life, part of my being, and also, of course, I mean, part of my DNA. Uh, that was in 2008 when I had opportunity to do my national service at uh, TV3, mm. now Media General. Yeah. And so I, I would say that that was when I started developing mm. the drive mm. uh, I mean, of journalism. Okay. In these 14 years that you have built up experience in this industry, uh, a lot of your colleagues, juniors and even seniors have abandoned the boat. There is a lot of attrition in the field of journalism. What has been, what is the cause or what is occasioning this attrition? And why have you been able to keep faith with this profession all these 14 years? Well, a number of factors, I mean, uh has contributed to, I mean, this particular attrition that you're talking about here. So, motivation, um, you know, some of the media houses don't pay. Um, so, because of that, they see no future mm -hmm. in a career that perhaps they once loved. So, they just have to navigate a different path as far as, uh, I mean, the, the profession is concerned. Uh, for some of us who have been in the... Uh, profession for over a decade, a number of factors have also contributed to we or our continual stay in the profession. Um, the fact that we are being driven by passion, I mean, for me, what is the ultimate? And then the fact that, I mean, the other side of the coin may be some way, some power. We are fortunate that uh, we have a media, we have, a, um, I belong to a, I mean, a media house that I would say that when it comes to remuneration and all of that, it isn't bad. I mean, mm. compared to uh, other media houses, uh, of course, I mean, I wouldn't want to mention them, of course. Yeah. Uh, yes, but other media houses. So these are some of the factors that uh, really uh, mm. uh, come to mind w w when you're talking about the way and manner. Maybe uh, numbers as far as uh, practitioners, uh, perhaps, I mean, are plummeting. Mm. 
is there any particular assignment or set of assignments that stand out or stands out as your most challenging these 14 years? Absolutely. That was the Liberian elections um, in 2017. You know, it was spontaneous. Mm. I quite remember it was a Thursday, if my memory serves me right, or a Friday. Well, at that Thursday or Friday, I was just uh, mingling about uh, the central business district. Um, I was there in Accra when my former editor and boss never called me and asked me, do you have a passport? And I said, yes. And, and she said, the next thing was, uh, you are traveling to Liberia to cover the election. I mean, I had, and I wasn't the one who was supposed to cover that particular election. Um, one of my colleagues, but unfortunately, he didn't have a passport mm. uh, at that time. So the mantle fell on me for me to go and then cover the election. I mean, I had no um, uh, knowledge in terms of, I mean, history about that particular mm. environment and all of that. And it was my first time traveling outside the country. Uh, but lo and behold, I just uh, put myself together because one thing about me is that I don't take no for an answer. And um, I also don't see a challenge or any challenge as uh, an insurmountable one. I believe that uh, what, whatever, I mean, challenge that you face, you must go with a positive energy, positive mm. drive, and at the end of the day, God being on your side, you'll be able to overcome it. So I took that challenge, I mean, to travel to Liberia, which was a, a virgin territory as far as my career, I mean, is concerned to cover that particular election. Then um, the, the, I think, the, so the election was on a Tuesday, Monday, no, Tuesday after polls, mm. I had an interview I was supposed to have an interview with the former president who was the, who was the leader of the, um, uh, I think, the election observer mission. Okay. It was or something, something observer mission. Mm -hmm. uh, so he was leading that particular team to actually uh, monitor the, mm -hmm. uh, observe, observe the Liberian election. And uh, uh, I, after agreed to have that particular interview with me i was also thinking about my line of questions because uh, there were certain areas that i didn't want to go you know when you are when you when you are interviewing these guys mm. um, there's some level of agreement especially mm. with the protocol That's uh, area right. that you can touch area that you cannot touch so you have mm. to send your questions in advance scrutinize and all of that then they will come they will, they will repeat and then uh, with maybe affirmative or otherwise. Uh, so I, I sent my questions to Stan Dube, um, who had traveled with the former president, mm -hmm. and then uh, the answer was affirmative. And then we met at the I think Topman, Topman School. Uh, mm -hmm. Vote, I mean, counting was almost done mm -hmm. at, at that particular polling station. And that was where we had that interview. Now, it was live. So I was asking myself, what would be my first question? Or maybe <laughs> just the, 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 a follow-up question after asking him about his own observation and all of that. Mm. Definitely, there, there should be a follow-up question. And then also, how would that question be meaningful to not to the Liberian society, but even beyond the borders yeah. of Liberia. Because I mean, I, I think I was the if my memory serves me right, I start for correction do, but I think I was the only Ghanaian journalist who covered mm. that particular election. Mm. And I quite remember there were other media houses that were looking for the opportunity, CNN, BBC, Al Jazeera looking for opportunity to interview the former president, but it they it, it those opportunities never materialized. Mm. He agreed to speak to me one because I was coming from Ghana, and then maybe other reasons that I I, I am not privy to. Know. Yeah. But yes, but I am able to mention that one because I was coming from Ghana because even prelude to his answers, mm. he mentioned that I am I am granting this interview because. You are coming from Ghana, <laughs> and, and yeah. So and that went viral. I mean, uh, mm. it went viral as far as mm. the particular, I mean, uh, statement is concerned. So uh, yes, um, it was quite challenging, but again, God being so good mm. to me as far as my journey is concerned, uh, again uh, ordained me to do this particular job. And I think the the, the other one with the vice president too. Something happening. Kentampo, I think 
in the Kentapo waterfall, there was a disaster there. Yes. So, so involving school vested. children. Yes, yes, yes. So, and I love to scoop. I love to scoop. Mm. So when a vice president was there, I, I was I was just challenging myself. I need to get an interview with this with, mm. with a second gentleman. Um, and then my instinct was telling me, aren't you afraid of the security detail and all of that? So I was just looking for that opportunity to strike. So I think he was coming out of one of the wards. Mm. Then quickly I rushed and then mm. get crashed actually. I just no no, I think there was ambush. I ambushed him. That's right. And, and and I think the reception was very, very positive. Mm. He, he also opened his arms and then I think I can't remember he 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 placed his hand around my neck or something like that. And then we had that particular interview. So that was it. Wow. Wow. With uncertainty on your mind, his reception really calmed your nerves. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> But will you say journalism pays? Does it pay? Well, you see, it depends on um, the, 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 the reason mm. why you find yourself in that journalistic arena. So what motivated you to go into journalism, mm. right? Because there are people who see this job. I always liken our profession to those in the medical field. Okay. Pastors. Mm. And then what have you. These are humanitarian uh, 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 professions. I mean, mm. you, just to ensure that you help build communities. You yeah. are doing it just to ensure that you help save lives and, and what have you. If your understanding to mm. that particular line then you are not necessarily looking at the monetary aspect. Then there are others who also venture into the profession mm. solely because they want to make, I mean, a living. Mm. For me, it is tricky because if you don't meet your expectation, then you want to cut corners. Then you want to do other things just so you'll be able to meet that expectation mm. of yours. You end up becoming a corrupt journalist mm. but if the drive is to really help society build you are being driven by passion then you are not looking at what you are going to get at the end of the day mm. Mm. social media let's talk social media social media has created richer bloggers in africa or in ghana specifically than richer journalists is there something journalists have not done, which is why we have not been able to enjoy the full potential that social media offers? You know, there's something we call evolution. Mm. I mean, it was always bound to happen. The new media was always bound to happen. Yeah. But there is this informal maxim that mm. when time is changing, you mm. also change. Mm. Better still, you have to move with time. Mm. Social media, if you are compared to traditional media, there has been some level of lapses because there sometimes information on social media or the new media most times are not accurate. Yeah. But as somebody who is coming from you call yourself a professional journalist. Mm. Those information that you find on social media or the new in or in the new media mm. is a lead that uh, is giving you the opportunity to cross-check mm. before you make that difference, yeah. okay? Mm. The difference here is the professional touch you attach to, or the, that professional touch to the information that you are picking from social media, mm. right? The difference between us and then the bloggers mm. is the fact that as a, as a journalist, a professional one for that matter, whatever information that you are putting out there must be nothing short of truth, mm. must be nothing short of factual, mm. right? Even though sometimes factual is, I mean, uh, subjective. And, and then even relative. But, but the relative. But the most important thing is that um, uh, they are, they, it is balanced, 
they are they are they are they are facts supporting that information that you are putting out there mm. you are not only conjecturing you are not just uh, 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 being moved by the bandwagon on or uh, within the within the new media space mm. but you are backing it with facts mm. that are verifiable yeah. okay so that is the difference but it's rather unfortunate that sometimes we are swayed Mm. Okay, by the views on social media, and for that matter, uh, we end up becoming a, a corporate yes. instead of people who are supposed to know better. Mm. Okay, so I wouldn't say that the new media has been a disaster, rather, than the new media has been a complement mm. to the traditional media, and both sides are really helping to. I mean, uh, uh, change the narrative. Mm. You came into journalism in 2008. Facebook, for instance, was four years old. Now, over the years, you have seen how journalism has been altered or how it has been disrupted by the introduction of social media. How has social media redefined the frontiers of journalism practice? Now, a lot of things are happening on social media. Mm -hmm. Now, social media has become, uh, quote and unquote, primary source of information. That yeah. is to say, the moment something happens, mm -hmm. somebody will just uh, snap it with his or mm -hmm. her phone mm -hmm. and then quickly post it on social media. Yeah. So I can tell you that in recent times, Mm. About 80% of the information we get, they are coming from social media, yeah. right? Yeah. But when you get the information, like I said earlier, mm. when you get the information, the onus lies on you for you to double check, mm. cross check, whether the, this particular information that I'm getting is accurate. Mm. Now, there are a number of technology that you are able to use to cross check, whether it is not even an old video that has been reposted. Yeah. Whether it is it is it is not something that happened uh, on different environment that somebody is trying to uh, mm. misrepresent it. Yeah. Okay. So all these technologies are technology that you need to be abreast with, all right, to be able to verify the veracity of mm. an information that you are picking from social media. Nonetheless, mm. social media or Facebook, I mean, is of greatest, I mean, importance to. The, the journalistic drive. I mean, mm. the world has evolved, okay? Yeah. And whether you like it or not, you simply cannot do anything about it, <laughs> but you just have to go with it. But yeah. the most important thing is that you must not deviate mm. from, from, from your sole responsibility and then sole, I mean, pledge to the public mm. that you will not report nothing, but, I mean, I mean genuine information or you are not going to give them fake news. Okay. These 14 years, what are your golden memories? Well, I have, I, myself, I have, I have actually not sat down to a pen down <laughs> as your... <laughs> <laughs> the name of your program. Yeah. But um, what I think... I remember in 2008 when... Mm. I first appeared on TV. Mm. And so I, I joined at the time one of my, but the editor was leaving. Mm. Uh, and uh, because of the few exploits, of course, because of my few exploits, mm. I, I was made, um, I think, the leader of the coverage okay. as far as the elections in the uh, region. Well, I mean, the Ashanti region was concerned then. Okay. So I was doing most of the live stuff. You mean in 2008 and, uh, when you were a national yes. service person? As national service person, yes. I was Fantastic. doing most of the, yes, I was doing most of the live stuff. I, I remember mm -hmm. I was I was assigned to uh, Bekwai. Bekwai then was the hotspot in the Ashanti mm -hmm. region mm -hmm. because that was the time uh, Joe Seiwusu had gone yes. independent you know, mm -hmm. uh, against mm -hmm. Kofi Poku, who was yes. standing on the ticket of the MPP. Yeah. So there was a lot of tension mm -hmm. um, in Bekwai. I mean, the tension on Bekwai 
was very, very huge. Not mm. even Asamase. Yeah. Uh, Bakwai was very, very huge. So mm. I was there and I was reporting for uh, TV3 then. I mean, the, the, the pressure on me was just immense as a young journalist, uh, <laughs> a yeah. novice for that mm. matter. Mm. But again, with God on our side, we we're able to deliver. Then mm. in 2012, I was assigned to the North to cover mm. the IEA. Okay. Uh, that was when um, Ayarikov emerged yeah. <laughs> <laughs> IEA at Tamale. And, uh, and I had to compete. I was really general because uh, from TV3 covering that particular that particular mm. program or event. Joy had, uh, I mean, four or five journalists stationed yeah. there. A whole yes, team. Uh, a whole team. But I was a, I was the only person. I was the mm. only person. And um and with God on our side, we did we did great as far wow. as that particular job is concerned. Wow, wow. I mean, for the 2008 one, for me, it blows me away that yes. your media house was able to repose such huge confidence in you, means Absolutely. that they, they saw a rare gem, you know, in Absolutely. you, and they decided to uh, make it count. All right, um, let's talk about Sully. <laughs> <laughs> you see, I am here to get a colleague in Ghana or outside whom I have mentioned this thing that will not laugh. <laughs> I don't even know why it is always cracking us up. But what is your take or what are your thoughts on <laughs> Sully? I have a very provocative thought mm. about Sully. You know, so let's take it from this way. Mm. From this point. You you are invited or you are assigned to a program, right? Mm. Maybe outside um, your jurisdiction, or let me say, even, even within mm. your area of operation. Mm. And as part of the program, let me use the GRI. Okay. Ghana Integrity Initiative. Integrity Initiative, yeah. As an example, they pay for transportation, right? Mm. Uh, whenever you attend your program, mm. pay for transportation. Will you describe that as uh, a move to influence your story? No. Is it? Well, I don't think so. Is it because we are seeking to uh, bless it once it is coming from them as an anti-corruption agency? Is the practice? I, I, not, generally... I think. I think. I think. I think. In as much as mm. people attend events, yeah. okay, and within that event, mm. um, the journalist or maybe the dignitary mm. is given transportation, TNT, mm. Mm. right? And it is not seen as a crime. Mm. I don't think that um, once it is documented, Mm. Once it has passed through the process where mm. the auditor, the internal auditor or the external auditor is able to understand mm. why that particular money was paid. Yeah. Once there is a proper accountability as far mm. as that particular provision is made, mm. once that particular money will not influence Mm. And mind you, it is if it's TNT, mm. but it is not something that is um, meant to influence you as a journalist. That's right. Then, then I don't think there's anything wrong with it. But if, I mean, and of course, I mean, if you are, if you are, if you are, if you are, if you are asked to come and cover a program, okay, mm. and your TNT, we all know. Should not go beyond 50 Ghana cities. Okay. And you are given 1,000 Ghana cities. <laughs> I mean, I think, well, <laughs> yes, questions will have to be raised. Okay. No, but sometimes, sometimes also, who is giving the money? It's very important. It's extremely important. Involved. It's extremely important. For instance, look at it this way 
Mm. If let's say you meet the president directly, when you are leaving, mm -hmm. he gives you 50 CDs for transports. It may be looked down upon because you expect bigger from him. Okay, so so that, now that, that, okay, so now the big question is on what basis was the money given to you? I mean, I think that, that is the that is the most important thing. Mm. On what basis? Mm. Why did the person give you the money? Mm. Okay, yeah. why did the person give you the money? What is the motive behind it? I think that's the most important thing. Mm. If that particular money is given to you, regardless of the amount, mm. is to influence a story that you are doing, mm. then it is problematic. Mm. But if that money is, is not meant to influence, and, mm. and, and let me tell you, when it comes to somebody influencing your story, Mm. It's not only about money. That's right. Somebody can just call you or mm. somebody can even threaten you. Mm. Yeah. Okay. And then mm. that can change the whole narrative as far as oh, yeah. your story angle is concerned. Indeed, so will you, yeah. will you so 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 will you still say that the person has given you sorry? That is why that particular uh, story angle has been uh, uh, twisted to favor the person. Or to kind of promote the person in a mm. in a way that um, mm. at the end of the day it will benefit him and his cohorts. Mm. All right. So yeah, I indeed, think... with with regard to this uh, other ways of influencing, when I hosted Kufi Edu Dunfe from a multimedia group, he also said that these days things like even foreign trips with public figures. Is part. I mean, some of them can maybe, can even sponsor maybe your wedding or some child naming ceremony or something. Absolutely. I mean, there are various ways they can various do ways. it. Yeah. So, so for me, my position is that mm. the most important thing is the conscience. The mm. most important thing is the integrity, right? Mm. Irrespective of how the person is trying to affect. Mm. Okay. Uh, 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 I mean, your angle and all of that. Mm. You should stand firm mm. and and always. I mean, uh, 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 have it at the back of your mind that mm. you are serving the people, mm. not a group of people or an individual. As our code of ethics and uh, mm. demand of us. Okay. Uh, on your bit about the accountability, there is a dark spot in it. That is the point where the thing has changed hands between the PRO and the journalists. The how much is always the issue. 200 mm. might have been apportioned to, let's say, a TV3 journalist, but mm. the PRO may dispense with just 100 or 80 cities. Mm. At that point, how then? Because I remember when I hosted uh, Franklin Asaridonko Jr., who is the assistant news uh, online editor for GBC. He, he, he was even, he sounded much more entitled. He says some PROs have been pocketing money men for journalists. And I was wondering how he's even able to detect that, how he knows that the journalist is supposed to receive 200, but PRO gives him 180 or whatever. So that dark spot I'm talking about, how do we, you know, tackle that issue of accountability at that point? Okay, so I think it starts from the organization, and okay. here I'm talking about even the internal auditors. Mm. For me, it should be official, right? Mm. How much is being has been allocated mm. to um, media house A, media mm. house B, media mm. house C? There should be a document, an official okay. document, to prove to that effect, mm. Mm. right? Mm. So. If you are signing, that is, if you want to sign, mm. okay. If you want to, because it is not, it is not, it is not, it is not uh, uh, by force. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If you want to sign and then take that money, mm. uh, there should be an official document to that effect, mm. so that, so that, um, the, the 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 it will ensure a proper accountability in the future. Okay. All right, because okay. I know that uh, sometimes you journalists attend programs, and mm. there is, uh, the, 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 I mean, the money, the, the money that is supposed to be given to the journalist, or the money that has been allocated 
to the journalist. Uh, sometimes you see somebody just, I mean, uh, giving out the money as if that particular money is coming from his or her pocket. Yeah, that's right. There's no, uh, I mean, a place for the journalist to sign. Mm. And then also, uh, in, in some firm, with some firms, you sign and then mm. give reason okay, That's right. mm. why that money has been given to you. Mm. Okay, then you state your media house and all of that. And you even mm. um, uh, uh, also uh, write the dates. Yeah. Okay. And everything. So I think there should the, the, the process should be done mm. in a way that in the future, mm. whoever is in charge of that will be able to account for it. Okay. You operate in the political space, and that is a, a beehive of activity. You have the, the, the beautiful, the ugly, and the unpredictable all happening within the political space. Have you at any point been approached with anything monetary or material to compromise the facts of any story you were doing so that you take it? Oh, them man, not at all. I mean, I... People know me for one thing. Mm. That is, they say, I love asking the hard questions. <laughs> I, so, no matter who you are, mm. right? You can be a friend, can be a brother, uh, who is a politician or whatsoever. But when it comes to you trying to influence me mm. to suppress the very question that is of interest to the public, it yeah. won't happen. Mm. It will never happen. Mm. Um, I have never had that encounter as far mm. as my, I mean, journalistic journey is concerned. I've never mm. had that encounter. Mm. What about the threats? Have you ever been threatened in the line of duty? Indirectly, yes. Mm. Indirectly, yes. Um, I, I, I remember some time ago, I mean, recent, my recent day, I did a story um, and the other side of the political divide wasn't happy. Mm. So that, that was the first time, actually. So the person called and was like, Evans, you must be very, very careful. That was it. Hmm. That was it. That was it. And, that uh, is serious. Yeah, I said Evans, you have to be very, very careful. We you know, uh, I mean, a lot of things are happening within the political space, mm. and uh, you have to be very careful. That was so, it. did this person belong to the offended side or the fa the side Absolutely. that is? Oh. No, the offended side. The offended side. So, was he giving side. you like something like a caution, as in because people can be dangerous, or he was actually issuing the threat from your understanding? Well, so I I rated the that particular statement as a caution. I, okay. But a caution that will not deter me from mm. doing what I think is right and mm. meet the and meet journalistic standards, mm. right? Because mm. I I I always say that I I have done a lot of stories. Mm. I have entered dangerous grounds. Mm. I have had a lot of exposure as mm. far as, I mean, covering, and you know, I, I cover a lot of political stories. Yeah. That, that is my area of interest. Mm. I've, I've seen a lot, all right? So I'm not necessarily moved by these things because I, I, I always say that there's a difference between a politically a politically matured journalist mm. and a politically exposed journalist. Okay. Politically matured journalists do not necessarily come across these kind of threats mm. unnecessarily. Mm. Unnecessarily. Mm. Okay. Somebody, there are people who are politically exposed, but the way and manner they go about their things. Mm most times elicits certain level of dangerous interest. Mm. Okay. Mm. Yeah. And, and, and I mean, it's a whole lecture. Maybe <laughs> we, we don't even have time to That's go right. into it. That's but right. the way and manner I do my things, because I mm. always ensure that 
I strike balance. Mm. If you are making an allegation, mm. I will try as much as possible to reach mm. the other side of the political divide to get yeah. a reaction. Mm. If you are not ready to react, fine. I'll go mm. ahead with my story. But I'll give you, I always give you the opportunity to react. Mm. So once that opportunity has been given and then you decided to parry it, I'm mm. not sure you have any issue, I mean, issuing unnecessary threats. Okay. You've done 14 years. If we are to go back into time, 16 years, are you still going to choose journalism? Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, um, hmm. you see, uh, I wouldn't give you a yes or no answer uh, <laughs> because, uh, because um, in terms of passion, I would say mm. yes. Okay. But in terms of family demands, maybe yeah. um, now I'm married. Yeah. When I started, I wasn't a, a married man. I was single. Okay. Mm. Uh -huh. So there was no pressure on me. That's right. Now I'm married with kids, right? Mm. Uh, so you're always looking for more. And I mm. always put pressure on my boss. And <laughs> I always put <laughs> pressure on my boss. Even though you are doing very well, yes, even though you are doing well, media general is doing well when it comes mm. to salary and all of that. Mm. But, you know, they say human wants are insatiable. Yeah. Right. So, yes, you're always asking for more because every day, I mean, things are going up. Mm. The inflation, inflation is just crazy. That's right. Right. Uh -huh. mm. In terms of passion, as, pro as, as a professional journalist, I would say, yes, why not? But if, if I'm talking about the other side, what has to do with family and demands mm. and all of that, well, I would say maybe... I would want to go into oil and gas. <laughs> <laughs> that is where the big money is. <laughs> that is where the big money is. <laughs> Should journalists be licensed? Do you buy into that? The, pro the producer should be licensed, but not the practitioner. Okay. So let me explain. Hmm. The producer is the institution. Okay. But the practitioner should not be licensed. And I agree with um, Suleiman Abrama in 2019. Of course, um, when President, former President Kofo had um, suggested that, mm. and he coming out to say that it will suppress press freedom. Yeah. Yes, I, I think I, I agree with him. Mm. You know, the media, if I am right, apart from the organs of government and then the other important public institutions like the, the police, the civil mm. servants and all of that, mm. um, who are mentioned in the 1992 constitution. It's the media. Yeah. Mm. The fourth estate of... Mm. Okay, so it tells us all that the work of the media is very critical mm. and crucial in nation's development. Mm. Okay, and very sensitive as well. If anything will undermine media freedom, mm. then it curtails the, 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 the execution of our work. Okay. Anything that seeks to undermine media freedom mm. curtails the execution of our work. Mm. Okay, and that is exactly what we have to avoid. Mm. I think the institutions should be tackled. For instance, if you go to Ghana Institute of Journalism, if yes. you go to Africa University College of Communication, of communication yeah. even diploma, mm. you, 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 will, you will spend two years. Mm. Okay. Mm. Before you can secure your diploma certificate. Yeah. If you want degree, then you are looking, I mean, um, at four years. Four years, or you're looking at four years. Mm. All right. It is not for nothing that that system has been put in place. Mm. Just to ensure that by the time you come out of school, mm. you are ripe. Okay. And even after school, it's just like you wanting to be a lawyer. Mm. After, after, after spending four years at Legon or KNUSD mm. or DEMP or whatever. 
you still have to spend another two years at Makola. That's right. After spending two years at Makola, you still will have to uh, study under a firm, a law firm, okay? Go through the mill before you can call yourself somebody who has been called to the bar. Mm. On the medical field, after spending four years at Ken USD, mm. you still have to do, I mean, two years at yeah. Fanoche, mm. right? Then you also have to understudy, all right? So people who have gone through GIG, mm. AUCC, and yeah. other recognized journalism yeah. school, yeah. on the field, the difference is quite vast. Mm. Okay. Mm. And uh, I think that if we want to talk about licensing, mm. then the focus should be ensuring that schools that produce, schools, um, of course, that train mm. people who want to be journalists are schools that are accredited. Okay. Okay. Schools that are accredited. Of course, mm. I mean, Obama said, and he hit, he, he, he hit it right. Mm. The institutions must be strong. We yes. need a stronger institution. Mm. Okay. So if we have schools that are well accredited, mm. that are giving proper training, not the six mm. months, the three months, that's right. Training. Mm. We are talking about two years. Yes. Least four years at most but even now we have some journalistic or so, sorry some some journalism schools that are doing one month after one month you have a certificate to practice so time ago i saw a two weeks diploma program a in two weeks diploma program in journalism sometimes i feel sad it, it looks like now it is the cheapest profession hmm Everybody at all now can become, can, can, I mean, calls himself or his or herself a journalist. Mm. Everybody, anybody at all. Yeah. Okay. After two weeks, I'm a journalist. The moment he's able to speak through the mic, he's a journalist. Indeed. A journalist. Uh, Beatrice Pugabra said something that one interesting thing that is happening in parts of Ashanti region is that some of the media owners, when they attend funerals and their MC is very good at the use of appellations. Look, mm -hmm. give him one week or two weeks in no the time. Platform. Yeah, the MC is already a morning show host. Morning show host, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. So, I mean, I think, so you, you, if you are able to speak, mm. right, if we're a good orator, mm. then you have the opportunity of becoming the face of the station. Very wrong. You know, looking at the depth of knowledge and then also how well versed the person is mm. as far as reporting on politics is concerned. So you always hear conjectures. Oh, yes. You always hear, I mean, uh, outright uh, lies, outright lies, opinions, mm. right? And not, I mean, premise. That is built on facts. Mm, mm, mm. You have done 14 years. How many more years do you want to go before turning your back on journalism? Well, I maybe I'll enter politics. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll enter politics. I will enter politics. Um, and maybe would want to also do. Law. Mm. That is what I want to do in the near future. Mm. I, I and I just want to do it one thing at a time. Okay. I I I I don't want to rush into it. Mm. I have a plan, uh, but sometimes I don't share my plan. Actually, mm. I don't share my plan. Yes, but mm. uh, in terms of uh, the specifics, mm. but that is what I am looking at in the near okay. future. Okay. This is your desire to enter politics. Was it influenced by your years of reporting on politics? Some way, somehow, because if I see how some politician mm. how some politicians lie their way through, mm. 
and then eventually disappoint the mm. uh, very people who repose some level of confidence in them. Yeah. I think that narrative can change. Mm. I, I don't see politics to be an evil environment. Okay. Unfortunately, that is how it is perceived. Don't forget that during the days of Jesus Christ, I mean, yeah. we had people who were practicing politics and still doing good. Mm. David was a politician, wasn't he? Yeah. yeah. Moses was a politician. Yes. But to some extent, Abraham was a politician. Joseph became a prime minister. Absolutely. Mm. All right. And they, they did very well. Mm. Okay. So why has it changed? Mm. Why has people mentality or perception about politics change from good to bad? All right. So I, I think some of us can be the change makers. Okay. And then, uh, of course, I mean, they are good nuts in, in our current dispensation. They are people who are doing very well. I don't want to mention names. Mm. Um, um, uh, there are people who are doing very well. Other few politicians that I know, mm. even the Ashanti region, who are, I mean, changing the narrative as far as community mm. development is concerned. Yeah. Mm. Uh, they are really helping their constituents develop mm. in, 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 in life and all of that. I, I also want to, uh, I want to see myself in that field, okay. uh, helping people to also develop. Right. Wow. 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 So this, uh, the political ambition, is it going to fall in with one of these big parties we have here? Or are you looking <laughs> at entering parliament? Maybe entering well, parliament as an well, independent at... candidate? Well, I, I, you see, I'm still weighing the options. I, okay. I, I don't know. I'm still weighing the options. Okay. It's rather unfortunate that we don't have a third force. Mm. Um, Ghana, uh, since 1979, we've been practicing, even though we gave it a better meaning in the 1992 mm. constitution, but 1979 was supposed to be a multi-party democracy. But we ended, we ended up having a two-party two yeah. system or something yeah. like that. Mm. 1992 is very clear mm. that um, we have... A multi-party democracy yeah but in practice mm. it is becoming like a dual system a two-party right. state mm. yes i mean in practice even though if you go to the constitution it mm. it, it talks about a, a, dif a different thing i don't know what is going to happen um, mm. in, in the in the years ahead whether we're mm. going to have a third force, third force. maybe you will start that one i haven't made a decision <laughs> yet which one i will go uh, but definitely I'll go into politics. You are the Northern Sector Bureau Chief. That is like a supervisory role, am I right? Yes, like an editor. Okay, great. Now, what that means is that you are saddled with reporting and also supervising others. How are you combining that and how much time are you able to have for yourself and family amidst all these responsibilities? Well, so we pride ourselves as uh, first in news, uh, first in entertainment. entertainment. Yes, yeah. um, that alone, mm. okay, tells you the level of pressure. Mm. We want to be the first to report on any breaking story, but mm. um, we want to do that without deviating from. Um, uh, accuracy mm. and then also um, balancing. Okay. We, 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 we have to ensure that whatever information mm. that we are feeding our viewers, we are feeding our listeners, we are feeding our readers, is nothing short of accuracy. Mm. And as media general, we don't shy away from that. But if you are not if you don't understand that, then you have no business with media general because okay. our bosses are very particular about mm. that. Mm. Good. And it comes with a lot of pressure, okay? Mm. Because whatever story that a team member brings to you, yeah. you need to ask questions. My mm. boss, Michael O'Tierje, will ask questions. Mm. He wants to be sure that 
before that particular story is played on TV, mm. Mm. there wouldn't be any room for questions. Okay. All right. So every question must be answered mm. before that story sees the light of day. Okay. And in the same thing we I, I do here. Mm. A lot of questions will have to be answered, ans answered. I mean, we, we need to understand why we want to do this particular story at the end of the day. Mm. Uh, what good will it be? I mean, to the very people that we are serving. Okay. okay. It is it is very important. Then, of course, at the point, it's especially on political stories. Yeah. I have to be active on the field. Mm. Political stories, I, I lead the team. Mm. Um, because, you know, <laughs> political reporting can be very tricky. Yes. All right. And sometimes you need you need experienced hands to in media general, we don't joke with it mm. with that. Experienced hands are always deployed at, 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 at the forefront when it has to do with uh, politics. Mm. Uh, and you know, <laughs> I mean yeah. political reporting is very dicey. Oh yes. So yes. I always ensure that I'm on the field, mm. leading the team and, and then all of that. Mm. So, um, I wouldn't say that um, um, the, the pressure isn't enormous. I mean, with what I've given you, or mm. from, yeah. from, from from what I've shared with you, yeah. um, I mean, it, it's very clear that the, the pressure is, mm. I mean, obvious. But mm. yes, we have to do some level of a balance act. Mm. Thanks for this conversation. Thank you. This very has much been for hands it. down, William Evansink, big man. Northern Sector Bureau Chief. There's got a small role. Somebody's <laughs> dream position. He occupies it so effortless and he's able to, you know, shuffle between family responsibilities and his work and get things done. He's a father of three. I don't know if there's a full stop or there's a comma. At the stop. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, my brother, for your time. Thank you very much for having me. Right. This has been pens down. We'll be back next time with another edition. We'll have another colleague here talk about your journalism journey. Thanks for joining us. Bye for now.